So what are you here to see tonight? I'm here to see Star Trek Into Darkness. Did you see the first one? Yes, I did. And what did you think of it? I thought it was really cool how they did the whole revamping it using black holes and all that stuff to, you know, create a new timeline. So I'm, I'm interested to see in this one, you know, how, the, how they continue that and what, what changes from, you know, what we consider the original Star Trek timeline. You saw the first movie, right? Of course. What would you think of it? Well, I thought it was a good mixture of kind of the classic feel of the series plus like a new school kind of vibe that everyone else can can kind of relate to. How do you think the the cast is doing compared to like the original series? Um, are, are you a big fan of the original like 60s series? Yeah, um, not so much the 60s series. I mean, I like it. Uh, I kind of like the first generation a lot. I would say the new cast does a great job relating to the characters. And you can really tell that they that they get right into the storyline and be able to kind of relate to how how everything was set up from from previously. So, you know, even if you're even if you're new, you can still get an idea. But if you're an old, you know, Star Trek fan, you can kind of relate to the past characters and see how they intermingle. So, you are in engineering, I'm guessing, right? No. What, what are you, security? Sure. Yeah, the original series, the commands were gold. I got my I got my generations mixed up there. That's yeah, embarrassing. The next generation is red for command. I'm embarrassed right now. If I, am... I was wearing a red shirt, I'd probably die by the end of the night. <laughs> what are you excited to see going into this movie? Oh, well, I figure uh, the special effects got to be great. You know, the way they can make them today. You know, we're compared to the way it was when Spock and Kirk was back on TV, and it's just. You know, they, it was so innovative. You wouldn't even have the flip phone today if it wasn't for Star Trek. That's what they did, that's, you know, the communicator. I mean, that's, I yeah. love <coughs> Boy, I, I really couldn't, couldn't say, I don't know, but it was so futuristic when it come out, you know. It was just always good, good theater. You know, there was always a good uh, moral issue with the, with the uh, TV series that, that was hidden in there some way like they had one one series where the guy was half white and half black and there was another guy that was half white and half black but the reason they they were fighting each other they were fighting each other because one guy was half black on one side and the other guy was half black on the left side they went over all the issues of the times and you know they hit them like in this in the script you know and it was it was just really interesting i always thought whenever i was growing up do you have any expectations i don't want to see that happening I don't want to see that happening. That's, that's, He's pointing to the crashing Enterprise. Yeah, that's, 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 that'll probably I'll cry. What do you think you're going to feel coming out of this movie? Hopefully I'll like it and want to come see it again. <laughs> At least three or four more times. Is there anything else you want to add before you, you head into the theater? Or? <laughs> there you Welcome to Abnerdity, your monthly show on Very Tasty Productions, where we talk on an absurd level about the things we like to nerd out about. I'm your host, Matt Tasty Saparito, and these are my co-hosts, Elliot Flamingo Party Ianello and Dan the Vampire Slayer Sweeney. You may recognize Dan from the Dark Knight episode, the inaugural Abnerdity, the very first one we ever did. This month, we're talking Star Trek Into Darkness, and really just the Star Trek universe as a whole, and... We're going to do something different this month. We're going to do a timed discussion. Seven minutes on the clock, and once that seven minutes is up, we have to stop talking. We have to have said what we want to say in that seven minutes. Once it's done, we're done. So we have a, a few topics laid out here, and we're going to try and get through as many of them as possible while satisfying our nerdy urges. Exactly. I don't know if I can do this. Are we ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. I'm going to try. Three, two, go. All right, so we're going to start this off with our 10-second reviews. Elliot, you want to start? Um, I loved it. It was a really good uh, flick, and um, I'm kind of going in the, in the vein of my really quick review for Bioshock Infinite here. But uh, definitely uh, better than, I, I really want to say, I don't know. Uh, let me start over with that 10-second review. We're, we're rolling, dude. We're, we're just, I know, you gotta I know, keep I know, going. I know. You got to keep going. <laughs> I got to <laughs> Gotta keep it up. <laughs> uh, all right, I definitely liked it better than the original Abrams one, but still, Wrath of Khan is still my favorite Star Trek of all time, and it was it was absolutely better than uh, Insurrection and Insurrection. Actually, all of the Next Generation movies. I hate you. 
<laughs> All but of them. We'll save that for later. Yeah. Uh, my review, I loved it. It's a great start to the blockbuster, the summer blockbuster series of movies that are coming out. I would see it over Iron Man 3 any day. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, definitely. Just a definitely great better. movie. If I were to rate it, I'd give it a 9 out of 10. And I'm not even that big of a Trekkie. Actually, I'm not a Trekkie, which is why we have these two. Yeah, and that's that. what you just said there is why I think this movie is going to be so successful. It plays to the heartstrings of the super fans and the Trekkie universe like there are so many throwbacks to the original series that just had me go oh while we were in the theater it's true and these two were giggling like little schoolgirls the entire but at time, the same uh, guilty. time guilty. at the same time it's good enough of a movie just on a cinematic standpoint and from an actor's performance standpoint that anybody who's not even familiar with the universe can enjoy it Yes. The, the throwbacks to the original series are a super awesome bonus for the people who know the references and get them, like the Tribble. But um, other than that, I, it was an awesome movie. Yeah. Oddly enough, the Tribbles didn't cause them any trouble in this movie. Mm. If any, if, if the I'm tre- sorry about the Trekkies thing. get that. All so. right, so we're going to go into one of the big things for at least us non-Trekkies that want to see the movie and enjoy it. The performances were fantastic. Uh What's his name? Chris Pine? Yep. Chris, Chris, Chris Pine, Pine was Kirk. fantastic as Kirk. He does the whole roguish character thing very well. Zachary Quinto, fantastic as Spock. I understand, like, there's this whole emotional aspect to Spock. Mm-hmm. He's half that, human. Yes. Yeah, he's not full Vulcan. The, like, all the actors, and I mean, it's, they have, I mean, Quinto and, and Pine have big shoes to fill. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, but on top of them, you know, Zoe Zaldana, on top of being incredibly attractive. Uh, really, I think Alice E. Alice e. I'm not saying she's not, attractive, <laughs> but Zoe Saldana did a fantastic job as Uhura in the last movie and this movie. You know, putting a different spin on the character that Abrams decided to to do with the the screen. Right, I don't know if he was involved with the script at all, but he mm-hmm. had some say in her character and their yeah. interpretation. She did very well. Well, I think they all establish their own version of the character while still hearkening back to the original series characters. It's just yeah. they found this sweet spot, which is really hard to yeah. find. And I speaking would say... Speaking of the original series... I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a quick cut there. And speaking of the original series, uh, there were a lot of reversals and throwbacks back to the original series, like I was saying before. Mm-hmm. And just so you guys know, this is not a spoiler-free review. Um, yeah, so if, if, if you haven't spoilers, seen it, quit now. Quit watching now, because we're about to spoil about some to get stuff. Into some stuff. And you should have left by now. So... I loved what they did with Spock and Kirk. And Kirk, the that flip. was so cool. Having Spock yell "Con!" Oh my God! That's my I understand that was a huge reversal for the movie. I know yeah. from the uh, mm-hmm. the Wrath of Khan, apparently Kirk was the one who yelled that. And once again, haven't seen any other movies except for the two new ones. So, if you guys, we can fix you. Yeah, you. I mean, the the first the first attempt at a Star Trek movie was admirable, but the Wrath of Khan was and still is you know, probably the best Star Trek. And it was the second Star Trek, and this is the second Star Trek in sort of the uh, revamped yeah, universe. The, the Abrams universe. The Abrams universe. Mm-hmm. And he just, he does a very good job of hearkening. Once again, I use the word hearkening, but yeah. you, you kind of have it's to. It's a throwback. It's a throwback, mm-hmm. but he, he puts his own spin on it. And it just it just works. Yeah, like, isn't beautiful. this an alternate reality from the it, original Star it, Trek exactly, universe, which it, explains the whole Spock thing who's from still, the first and second movie? Who's still on? Who's still in this timeline? Leonard yeah. Nimoy Spock is still in this timeline. He yeah. actually makes a cameo. He's on Vulcan, which in was this great. Movie. I I know you guys flipped out. I was like, whatever. Holy yeah, crap. whatever it is. Um, I want to I want to get this out there. What did you guys think of Benedict Cumberbatch's performance as Khan as compared to the original Ricardo Montalban? We we all kind of knew yeah, who he was from the trailer. Yeah, Everyone <laughs> knew he was Khan. <laughs> it yeah. was Khan. Everyone they knew tried to Khan. cover it up, but I mean, there were telltale signs. You were saying his his jacket that he was the wearing ridges. Had that, mm-hmm. those ridges and um but I he First holds all, his own against the great late great Ricardo Montalban. Yeah, Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch did well. Is an incredible performer. He really um, commanded the screen every time he was on. He was terrifying. He was, he was absolutely so terrifying. Good. But he was also sympathetic. If you could tell, like in the series, like in the movie, there were moments where I felt for him. I was like, you know, oh sure, he is not completely the villain. You know, he's been victimized in this. Yeah, he's story. been cheated. There's kind of two villains in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Admiral Asshole. Khan and then uh, yeah. Marcus. <laughs> 
Admiral Marcus. Yeah, Admiral uh, Marcus. Carol Marcus's uh, father. father. Mm-hmm. And if anyone knows who Carol Marcus is, you'll get why that was such a big deal that she exists yeah. in this. Yeah, because I think that's timeline. Star Trek Three. Anybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which, and there was some setting up for Star Trek III. Because she gives Kirk the look. She gives him the puppy eyes at the very end of the movie. Mm-hmm. So they're setting up that romance. Also, she just decided to change right in front of him, slash behind him. That was your was favorite part of the movie, thing Dan. For uh, all the fans. We're we running out of time. 48 seconds left. So. so let's go into the theme of the movie, which me and Elliot talked about a little before we filmed, uh, which was, what would you do for your friends? You know, like, Khan was doing the whole thing for his friends that were trapped. The whole movie kind of went into Spock and Kirk's relationship. What do you guys think about that? I don't know. I mean, like, Spock and Kirk's relationship was definitely the heart of the movie, the emotional oh, yeah. heart of the movie, but mm-hmm. you still had, um, like... Spock and Yohora. Spock mm-hmm. and Yohora. Carol and her father. Exactly. I was going to say, there's really actually no Khan, villain. Khan and yeah. his they're, crew. they're all yeah. acting... Beginning to end, this movie was about sacrificing for the people you love. For loved. the people you love, yeah. yes. That was, I think, a really good way to end it because... And we're out of time. Uh, <laughs> That's it. That's it. Um, so, closing statements before we go. Uh, Elliot, you want to start? It's... I think it's... Into Darkness is definitely going to be my favorite movie of summer 2013. It does everything you want it to. It will fulfill your Trekkie needs. It will fulfill your sci-fi needs. It will fulfill your summer blockbuster needs. My only little kind of gripe with it was I felt the resolution was a little rushed. But other than that, you know, it was just fantastic. I'm on the same page. I do agree. If I had any gripes with the movie, it was that. Because there was the whole, you know, Spock almost killing Khan in that one scene. I don't know if that's possible, but, you know, he tried. And uh, once uh, Zoe Saldana's character, Uhura, Mm -hmm. said that, he was their only chance. Yep. I mean, she Boom, used that word it, chance. Right. Movie yep. ends. Which meant like there could be so much more drama to happen and sure. then it just cuts to it worked. And it, it cuts to he wakes up in the bed. Yeah. It cuts to black and then voices and then, and then Chris Pine is sort of beat up in the hospital bed. But he's fine. Fantastic movie. It makes me want to go back and watch the old stuff. Go see it if you're not a fan like me. You'll love it. Yeah. Good, Dan. So my final thoughts about the film are great performances, great directing, my only concern is now that Abrams has signed on to do another super huge sci-fi oh, yeah. Star fans Wars universe, yeah. what's going to happen to this property? I know he's still signed on to produce the third film, mm-hmm. but um, I mean, what's it going to be like when he's not in the driver's seat? You know, yeah. that that sort of worries me a little bit. I have faith in the cast mm-hmm. to, to stay true to the characters that they've spent the last two films creating yes. and sort of carving out of the, the similar... I guess shade, they're, the, they're different shades of the same color. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, it's still Captain Kirk and Spock, but it's it's their own interpretation and it's Abrams' interpretation. So I'm excited and a little bit nervous to see what happens in the uh, already confirmed third movie. So Which just just goes to say, you know, from Lost to now, J.J. Abrams has proved himself as a fantastic director of sci-fi. Yeah, absolutely. So anything, if anything, I'm excited for the next Star Wars movie. That's all we got. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Links all in the description. Mm-hmm. You can follow VTP on Facebook. Link also in the description. Oh, uh, follow Four Horsemen Comics on Facebook. Go to their website. Yeah, big thank you to them for letting us shoot here mm-hmm. whenever we want to, really. Um, they're super awesome, very helpful. And if you have any uh, inkling to read comics, do tabletop gaming, come to Four Horsemen Comics. It's fantastic. It's a really great community. Go nerds. Yeah.